the rough field of the universe, growing, changing, a net of energy, crossing patterns. He wanted to write a poetry that was simple and serious and passionate. He could see things that other people didn't see, I think, was the extraordinary thing about him. He was a kind of a seer. It's as if he has an innate understanding of how the world does, does or doesn't work. You know, I totally regard him as the greatest poet of this century. Weaving towards a new order, a new anarchy, always different, always the same. He's very loyal to his Tyrone background, but he's never forgotten the wound of being sent at the age of four from Brooklyn to be brought up in Tyrone. We know the troubled fracture in his family, but that was replicated in, in a larger fracture in his province and, and in his community. So he became a kind of poet of personal recollection and of tribal reach at the same time. We did the, the rough field in London at the Roundhouse, 1974. Just to hear the reaction to the, to the poetry and music was just tremendous. I was very much taken by his short stories. The poet's touch runs, runs through them. You know, that ability to, to pull loads of ideas or several emotions down and tie it in and tighten it into one apt phrase. And don't ask me how, because the mystery is there as well. I don't know how he does it. I wish I did. He has a poignant line that haunts me always from the rough field, with all my circling a failure to return. And there is always that sense that there is a paradise lost. But the boy with a heart full of hope is always there in John. And between the big sketch and canvas of certain works and the smaller, more intimate, private work, there's a vocabulary and there's a vision that is imprinted on a whole generation. Gaunt figures of fear and of friendliness, for years they trespassed on my dreams. There is something almost angelic about John. Now I say almost. He's a wily one. He's a rogue. He's full of mischief. Serious about his art. Good company. He was exactly the same kind of person then as he is now. Sometimes a little bit difficult and sometimes the most wonderful man you've ever met. You walk into a restaurant in France with John and you can sense the respect. I know he's a chevalier and that's one of the highest orders that the French can bestow. John was on the phone to me. He said, look, I have a book of poetry called Death of a Chieftain. And, uh, you know, Chieftains would be a great name. So that's how we got the name from John, the Chieftains. He often used to say to me, you know, I should be getting some, I gave you that name, the Chieftains, you know. <laughs> I said, thank you, John, bye-bye, happy Christmas, love your mother. <laughs> he is a much loved man. He's loved not only by his daughters, by his many, many friends, but also by his wife, Elizabeth. He is John the Beloved, and I hope he knows that. There are moments in every poet's life where you stand back and you ask, in absolute sincerity, the hardest question of all, will any of this have mattered? John, it matters. It matters. The one who continues, the one who survives the darkness and shows us light from it is certainly one to applaud. Mm -hmm.